As the Reformation spread across Europe, the practice of congregational singing flowed with it. From Luther's early works of the Psalms, we know that John Calvin was inspired to begin work on versifying the Psalms in French. This began with the Strasbourg Psalter while Calvin was in Strasbourg around 1537. When Calvin returned to Geneva in 1541, he introduced psalm singing to the congregation and he began producing the Geneva Psalter, which grew into several editions. These, in turn, influenced the English reformists and in 1556, the first edition of the Anglo-Genevan Psalter was produced. All of this influenced the early psalm singing of the Protestant church and did so for hundreds of years. Yet, once again, we find ourselves in Christendom, where the psalms have become less a part of our worship and our lives. Robert Godfrey remarks on this issue by saying, Few Christians sing the psalms anymore. Even if a songbook contains a few psalms, and even if they are used occasionally, most singers will not notice that they are distinctive or particularly important. If we use the Psalter at all, it is probably in a rather superficial, devotional way. Our minds and hearts are not saturated with the Psalms as the hearts and minds of earlier generations of Christians were. Do we really believe that the Psalms can bring about a transforming heart that rests and lives within the realm of a sovereign God who is sufficient and completely capable to bring hope, contentment, peace, safety, deliverance, and blessing to all of life's external circumstances? In short, is the book of Psalms sufficient to encompass all of life. We think it is, and that it is worth our time and resources to create something that can call God's people to sing the Psalms. We don't see it as more musical products for believers to consume. At Hymns of Grace, we believe that this is something that is vitally important in our worship, and at the root of psalm singing is a deeper connection to the providence of God in our lives.